Welcome to TK Friday. Today, I'm taking a deep dive into the mask calculator found in the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. You don't want to miss any of this tutorial. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I'm going to take a deep dive into the mask calculator found in the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. And to really show you how the mass calculator works, we're going to work with a gradient. I have this gradient. I have some colored dots here and some more colored dots. This is a PSD file that I'm going to provide for you. You can download it on my Google Drive. Just look in the uh, description below the video for the link. So you can go ahead and download this and follow along. It's going to help. Plus, I also have images about four or five different images that we're going to look at and apply the principles but first you're going to learn the principles of the mass calculator using the gradient tool in these crazy colors now just up front i want to tell you that i work in the pro photo color space and if you come up here to edit and come down to color settings if you work in pro photo this is very important you want to make sure that you have your gray gamma set to 1.8. That's kind of important. So if you download the PSD and follow along, I'm working in Profoto. And also if your masks look a little bit different than mine, it's because your color space is probably different. If you change to my color space, everything should line up perfectly. If you don't work with the Pro Photo color space and you decide to change it to work with my PSD, I don't think you need to, but if you're having issues, change it to the pro photo but if you change it make sure it's pro photo and gray gamma 1.8 okay and then don't forget to change it back when you're done okay i'm just going to cancel out of here and by the way these are the proper settings for the most popular color spaces pro photo gray settings gamma 1.8 rgb 1998 a lot of folks use that that would be gray gamma 2.2 and the srgb color space which is the smallest color space would be s gray i'll also list this information in the description below the video i'd encourage you to check your color settings and make sure you're using the right gray setting for your color space by the way there's a great sale going on at the tk8 store you can click on my affiliate link in the description below this video and there's 20 percent off everything on tony kuiper's uh web store if you use my promo code dk15 you will get the 20 percent off and i'll get credit for that so I appreciate it when you use my code DK15, but remember you have till the end of the month to take advantage of that 20% off. Now for the deep dive, you'll notice I have the background layer turned on, but the other two layers off. Okay, so this is the way we're going to start. Let's come up and open up our luminosity mask by clicking this icon right here. Now you'll notice that nothing has changed on the image because we're starting out with a black and white image, and this is what it looks like with a lights one. Now, all the tones on the left-hand side represent your dark tones, and the gradient is showing you that. We're at pure black over on the left, and then we come to pure white on the right, and all the different tones in between. Now, when I click on lights two, now we're only selecting these light tones here. If I go to lights three, it's getting more narrow. We're selecting these light tones. If I go to four, narrows more, and we're selecting these light tones, five, more narrow, and then six. Now let's click on darks one. And now we're selecting all these dark tones in here, right? And as I start to move over, let's go to two. It gets more narrow. Three, just like it was in lights, in the light tones. Here's four, five, and now six. That's dark six right there represented with this light area here. Now here's where the mass calculations come in. The reason I'm using the gradient today is because it'll really help cement the idea of what a mask calculator does for us. Now I'm gonna make a crazy mask right now, something you would never do when you're actually editing an image, but for learning purposes, I think it's going to help you understand how the mass calculator actually works. So just bear that in mind. I'll be making a bunch of different calculations right now. So right now I have darks six selected. I'm gonna click on the mass calculator, click plus, and now this is very important. We can stay in this interface here and I wanna choose light six. When I do, light six gets selected, right? And now I'm going to click equals. And now you'll notice I have darks six and light six 
selected. Now this is important. After you hit that equals button, you can no longer stay in this mass calculator and keep making calculations because what you need to do is click the mass calculator again because I'm going to do another mass calculation and just follow me here. So I'm going to click the mass calculator and next I'm going to add midtones to this. I'm going to click the plus, but now after I've already clicked that equals one time, right? So now I have to X out of here. And now what I want to do is go back to luminosity masks and click on midtones one. And now you'll notice I selected midtones one. And now check this out. All I need to do is click equals. And now I have light si or dark six, light six and midtone selected. Pretty cool, wouldn't you say? And again, you'll, you'd never make a mask this complicated you might but probably not in an actual real editing situation now to recap we have dark six selected we have lights six selected and we have midtone selected now let's do a subtraction let's click on the mass calculator click the minus let's x out of here this time i'm going to use a zone mask so let's click on the zone mask and i'm going to go around to zone five right in here click ok I'm going to tighten up that mask, as you can see right here. I'm going to tighten it up. Now, you see that line in the middle? It's not really there. If you zoom in, you'll see it's not there. It's just the way Photoshop is showing it. What I'm going to do is let's lighten it up a little bit, too. And now all I have to do is click Equals. Now, watch what happens. When I do that, now I've subtracted Zone 5 from, from this mask. Okay, so I have Dark 6, Light 6, Midtones, and I've subtracted out Zone 5 pretty interesting right we've used plus minus and now let's get crazy and add an intersection so follow me here but let's go ahead and click the mass calculator and this time i'm going to click the intersect button and if you'll notice down here in my channels you see i have a rectangle and a circle saved out for me so what i want to do is x out of here let's go to my channels and i'm going to intersect a rectangle see that rectangle right there click equals and now check it out now i have this rectangle with dark six light six midtones and i've subtracted out zone five so that's a super complicated mask but that's how a mask calculator works now generally you'll probably only use like one calculation two maybe at the most but i hope this makes sense to you and again you may want to go back and watch this but remember this is a mask lab and we're taking a deep dive into how masks really work now let's just for the heck of it output this to a color grading tool and then we can go in here and let's go on midtones here and you can see I'll just darken it up and you can see how it's affecting my image. You can't see much happening here because I have a gradient. So just forget about that. I'm going to go ahead and left click the midtone and reset that. But what I want you to see is this mask. Now, if you want to see what this mask looks like, click this arrow icon on the CX or combo panel and you can see there's our mask. But we're going to be doing these mask calculations on a real image, several images, by the way. So stay tuned for that. But we're not done here with a gradient. I'm going to show you some more. So stick with me. You can always go back on my YouTube channel and watch this video on the mask calculator for a refresher at any time. Now let's go back and click this double arrow icon and we'll get back to the actual gradient. And let's shut off this layer, this color grading layer. We don't need it. Let's turn on layer one and layer two. Layer one has the three primary colors of red, green, and blue, RGB. And let's turn on layer two. And it has a bunch of various different colors in here. Let's get rid of the color grading tool by clicking this X. Let's work with color mask. Let's click this icon right here. And now we can select a color. Let's select, say, like green right here and click OK. And now you'll notice this green circle is selected and any of these other circles with some amount of green in will be selective, selected as well, but not as much. And now let's keep building this mask. So let's come to the mask calculator, click on it, and let's go ahead and add. Let's X out of here because I want to use a zone mask. Let's click on the zone icon here. And I'm going to add a zone that is, say, like right here and click OK. And then what I want to do is narrow that zone in a good bit. And let's lighten it up a little bit here as well. So I'm picking that zone. So any colored circle that is in that zone will also show up in this selection. Let's click Equals. And now you'll notice we have some more circles selected along with our original colored circles. And that's all due to that zone we picked. And you see these uh, thin outlines around these circles 
That's only because of Photoshop, the way they uh, fade the edges in. Because I used a real hard edge uh, brush to get these circles. And let me go ahead and zoom into this uh, so you can see it here. See how it's using the, uh, the feathering along the edge here. Let's go and see what the actual block looks like. You can see it. You can see the feathering in here. And that's why it's showing up because it would be in that particular zone that I picked. So let's click out of here and let me go back to 100%. But that's why you see that little little white in there. It's just due to the uh, the way they fade the edges off. And that's a Photoshop thing. It has nothing to do with the TK8 panel. It just shows you really how accurate the TK8 panel actually is. So just disregard them. They don't affect your selection in any way. This time, let me output that to a hue saturation adjustment. And before I make the adjustment, let's look at the mask. Click on the double arrows. We see the mask. The mask represents the original colors I've chosen and also any colors that fall inside of the zone I selected when I added it with a mask calculator. Let's go ahead and make the saturation adjustment. Let me go ahead and get rid of the mask by clicking this icon here and now we're back to the image. Now remember I'm using color here. I have that one zone selected but nothing's going to happen there. It's only It will only affect the colors that were in that zone, okay? Now you remember the original color I selected was green and I selected that zone right around there. So now when I take this saturation and move it the whole way to the left, all those colors will start to reduce in saturation. This green circle loses the saturation altogether because remember that was the original selected color. And then if I take it to the right, you'll see saturation being added to those other colors as well. Now remember I'm using a hue saturation adjustment so I'm not affecting any of the gray values here. Even though they're in zone 5, we're only affecting colors that were in zone 5. But let's see how we can use this same mask. Let's steal this mask. Command or Control click on this mask and it'll select that mask. And now let's come up to My Channels, click this icon and click Active Selection. And let's output it to just a uh, Curves Adjustment Layer right here. Okay, and now that mask is on that Curves Adjustment Layer. Now let's take this curve and let's just pull it way down. Whoops, you see that? And now it's affecting the actual gray tones on this gradient, right? Because now I'm not just dealing, I'm not dealing with saturation, I'm dealing with actual luminosity and the luminosity values of any of the color circles that are in that selection will be affected as well. You'll notice they're getting darker. I have one final thing to show you with the gradient. So let me go ahead and shut off these layers. Everything but the gradient layer. Let's get rid of this properties panel. Let's come up to the luminosity icon here and let's select um, light six and mass calculator. We're gonna choose add. Now we're gonna add a dark six to that. Click equals. And now I wanna go back to mass calculator and add one more. Let's X out of here. I'm gonna use the zone mask this time and right in the middle, like the midtones right here, click okay. I'm gonna tighten this up really tight like that and let's lighten it up and let's click equals. And now you'll notice I have darks, midtones, and lights selected. I'm gonna output this to a color grading tool. First, let's take a look at the mask. Click this icon. We have shadows, midtones, and highlights selected. So that's important, so we know what we're doing. Let's click the double arrows again and get back to the gray tone image. Now, what if I wanted to use this mask and color grade the shadows, midtones, and highlights? So let's start with the midtones. Click on the midtone block. Let's drag this up into greens here, the gray block up into the greens, and you see that I've color graded the midtones. And now let's go to the shadows and move this block into the blues. And you can see there's my blues. And now let's go into the highlights and let's move this into the reds. So now you notice I have blue in the shadow, green in the midtones, and red in the highlights. And then if you click this block here with the three, with the three swatches, you'll notice there's all my color grades right there. And of course, you can adjust the luminosity value of them. But that's the final thing I wanna show you here with the gradient. And now we're gonna move into some real-time images using mass calculations. Here's my first image example. I have a landscape with a sun, a typical landscape image where 
I want to lighten up the sky back here a little bit, and maybe this area in here, but I want to protect the sun from blowing out, which would look really bad. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll use a mass calculation. Let's come up to luminosity mass, open that up. And what I want to use is lights one to get this area all up in here and some down in here lightened up, but I want to subtract. So let's go to the mass calculator, click the minus. I want to subtract lights three from that. This is a really good combination, lights one and lights three, when you're trying to protect your sun and click equals. So now you see my mask, my sun is protected. All right, and I'm only gonna lighten up the these areas up in here and some of the gray areas down here as well. I'm gonna output that to a color grading tool right here. So click on that. And then what I'm gonna do is simply click on midtones and let's just lighten that up. You see that? I'll lighten it way up there so you can see. But here is without the mask. See how that sun's getting all blown out around there? And here it is with the mask. And that's probably a little too light, so I'm gonna back off in this adjustment. But here's the before and here's the after, but I've protected my sun. Now let's move on to another example. Next I have this image with a lot of nice color going on in it. And what if I only wanted to bring up color on two of the colors, say maybe this yellow and this color right in here, any of these bluish green type tones, I wanna to bring up their saturation a little bit or take saturation away, whatever we wanna do. But we can take care of that with some mask calculations and color masks. So let's come up here and open up our color masks. And let's pick this yellow first right here. Click yellow, click OK. Now we can go ahead and tweak up our selection. So we can take these two circles here. If I drag this circle to the left, it'll encompass more of the colors. But if I want to tighten that adjustment up, I can move it more into yellow, something like that. And I can also take this and add more yellows and come into greens and other colors if I want to but I wanna keep it mainly on the yellows and I think right there should be good. Now there's feathering here too. If I take this feathering adjustment and start to move it to the right, it'll start to like feather out this way. And if I move it to the left, it'll start to feather in this way on both sides, by the way, when you're doing the feathering. So in other words, if I feather this way, it's going to give us more color and I don't want that. But if I want to tighten up the feathering, I can move this in like this. So we have a lot of adjustment here. And we can also lighten up that selection by moving this. I don't want to go too light because I'm going to pull other things in. So I'm going to pull this back like this. And then I can even get my levels adjustment here and maybe darken up the darks a little bit more just by pulling this in and lighten my lights up a little bit by moving this highlight slider into the left a little bit. We can even work with the midtones there a little bit. Right there I think looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and close that, and I like that. That's selecting my yellows pretty nicely. And now let's go ahead and click on the mask calculator and click the plus, because I wanna add another color. And um, let's get the color picker tool, click right here. And I'm gonna pick this color right here, click OK. And now there's that color. Now again, I can make some adjustments here. That's not the right way, tighten this up right around there. Do I want to move this out? No, I think it's pretty good where it is. I can lighten that adjustment up like that. And let's feather it in a little bit. Maybe somewhere around in there looks pretty good. And if you want to see the image, you can click this uh, icon right here with the two arrows and see. Okay, so I like my selections here. And you could color any of these other areas out if you didn't want them in there uh, with your uh, brushes here like use the black brush and color it out. But I'll also come here and use the uh, levels adjustment and I'll take the shadows and move this in like this. And let's lighten it up by moving this highlight over and we can work with the midtones as well. But I think that's selecting it pretty nicely. And I'm gonna go ahead and shut the properties panel and let's click equals. And now I have my two colors selected. And now let's output this to a hue saturation adjustment. Now remember I have yellow and this bluish green color selected, but let's look at the mask. We're on the hue saturation layer, click the double arrow icon. Those are my colors that are selected. Let's go back to the image by clicking here again. And now let's simply, if we need to add more saturation to those two colors, we can do it. You see that? or we could drain the color by moving this to the left and take the, take the saturation out. More of a pastel look, whatever you want. But in my case, I think I'll go with a little extra color there. So with color masks and the mask calculator, 
we can work with two or more colors at once. And now on to our next image. This is a fun little image. It reminds me of a poster. And what I want to do with this is lighten up this, this salmon-y pinkish color a little bit and also bring up some of the lightness in this uh, actual palm tree and maybe add a little color grading to it to give it more of a poster look. And you'll see here what I mean in a sec. But let's go ahead and come and go to color masks first. And let's select this color. Click OK. And this is a JPEG image, a stock image that you can download. And it looks posterized here. It's just because it's a low quality image, to be honest with you. But it will not be affected in the masking at all. It'll still look good. So don't worry about that. Anyway, what I want to do is uh, lighten up that selection by lightening this area up a good bit, like right around there. And that's selecting what I want. And then, of course, I can check the feathering on this. Yeah, maybe something like that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now let's click on the mass calculator and let's click plus because I want to add that palm tree. Let's X out of here because this time I want to use a zone mask. Yeah, click the zone mask and pick this dark tone in here. Maybe right here I think might be good and click OK. And it selects that palm tree rather nicely. Let's lighten up that selection a little bit. And uh, let's tighten it up a little. When we tighten it, we're losing some of this area up here. Now, don't forget, you have your levels always to, and your curves as well, and your paintbrushes. I like levels. It's really easy to use. So what I want to do is pull my shadows in a little bit, just to make sure that goes really dark up in there. And then I want to lighten up the midtones, see how the palm tree gets lightened up, and even the highlights here. Okay, and I know there's no detail in there, but I'm just going to add some color grading in there, and you'll see it'll look really cool. So maybe somewhere right, right there looks pretty good. Let's get out of here. Then I'll just click Equals, and now I have that area selected and the palm tree. And let's output this to a color grading tool, and I'll do this all with one color grading tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Midtones, and then I'm going to just lighten up the midtones. See, it's going to lighten up the area that I want lighted up. Something like that. And I might just add a little bit of pink into there. Not much, just a little wee bit. Something like that. And now let's go to our shadows. And let me add some, oh, I don't know, some of that pink, pinkish red color into my shadows. Can you see that? I'm going to even lighten these shadows up. See that? Give it a poster type look. Now that may be too much, but somewhere around in there. And do I want it more red? Maybe, no, maybe more of this pink tone like this. Something right around there. But check it out. Here's the before and here is the after. So it looks kind of like a poster. Before I leave this image, I'm going to go back to the midtones and let's give them a little more pink like that, pinkish red. And I'm just going to pull back on that midtone just a little bit. Again, here is the before and here is the after. And I like it. And now on to the final image. And I think you enjoy this a lot because I'm going to use the mask calculator with a zone mask and an intersection. So this is going to be a lot of fun. But what I want to do is darken some of the uh, clouds up in here, the darker parts of the clouds, and some of the shadows in the building I'm going to darken. And I'll use a zone mask here, and I'll use a luminosity mask for these building tones, and I'll also intersect the sky. So the first thing I want to do is follow me closely, uh, click this icon to select the sky, and then click this icon so we can edit our selection. I'm going to grab the burn tool and simply burn down some of the areas in the building that it missed like this. I'm going to be a little quick here. It's not going to be a perfect job, but... You get the idea. Take your time and get it right, but I think that's going to be good. And then you need to click this icon to output that as a selection. And then what we want to do is come up here to My Channels and click Active Selection. Click the Mask Calculator. Click the Intersect button. X out of here because now we want to get a zone mask. Click on the zone mask icon and click some of these darker tones up here in the clouds, like right in here. Click OK. I want to darken those. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that selection up a little bit, something like that, and maybe just lighten it up a little bit and click equals. And so now it's selected that sky. 
And now what we want to do is click the mask calculator, click plus, because now we want to add some of the darker tones down in the buildings. We're going to X out of here. And this time we're going to get a luminosity mask. And let's go through the darks. Here's darks one. Here's darks two. I'm looking for the really dark darks. Here's darks three. I think darks three is good. And what I may do is click on the levels adjustment here and maybe just lighten up the midtones a little bit and pull the shadows in a little bit just to tighten this up. Maybe lighten up the midtones a little bit more so they take more of a selection and pull the highlight slider in as well. Maybe like that. And now let's uh, get rid of this uh, properties panel. Let's click equals and check my selection out. There's my clouds. Here's my shadows in my building. And now let's output this to a color grading tool. Let's click on midtones and let's pull back on our midtones to the left and darken my clouds and my shadows all at one time. You see that? Isn't that cool? So look, here is a before and here is an after. Now, if I disable this mask, check the difference here. Quite a unique difference, right? And let's click it again. And again, let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. And if I wanted to darken these shadows a little more, I'll just click on this shadow block and move this to the left and darken those up a little bit more. And again, here is the before, and here is the after. Let's take a look at our mask by clicking the double arrows. Now this mask was a three mask calculation mask. We intersected the sky with a uh, zone mask for the dark parts of the clouds, and then we added the dark shadows of the building. And let's go ahead and go back to the image. And that helped us to do all our adjustments all through a color grading tool. And again, here is the before and here is the after. So mass calculations can really aid us with our TK8 workflow. So go ahead and give them a try. Don't forget, you can download the PSD gradient file from my Google Drive. And I also have these images that are stock images, links where you can download those as well. Hey, and let me know what you think of this tutorial. Did you learn a lot? I'd really love to hear from you. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.